In this video, we're going to take a look at roots of cubic equations. So let's just start with a general cubic here. So let's say we've got ax cubed. So ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. And this is all equal to zero. And we know that we have three roots here of alpha, beta, and gamma. So this has roots alpha, beta, and gamma. Okay. Then we could write this in a factorized form. So we know that we can write this here. Again, if we just write this out, ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d in the form of a lots of x minus alpha times x minus beta times x minus gamma. So x minus gamma there. Okay. And what I'm going to do now is similar to what we did when we were looking at the roots of a quadratic equation. I'm going to start expanding this out now here on the right hand side. So this is now a lots. So this would give me x squared. So what I'll do is I'll write this um, in a separate bracket here. So x squared, I'd get minus alpha x, so minus alpha x. And then I'm going to get minus beta x, so minus beta x. Then I'm going to get plus alpha beta. And then we still got this term here on the um, right here of x minus gamma. And what I need to do now is expand this quadratic here with this final term. And as you can see, there's a lot of work to this. Um, or maybe not a lot of work, but it's very easy to make a mistake. So what I'm going to get here is a lot of, so obviously I'm going to get x squared times x, that give me x cubed. So I have already expanded this here. So I know that each term I get is correct, but I'm not quite getting it in the same order that you might get if you were to expand as x squared times x and then x squared times minus gamma, for example. But you should get each term that I get here. So I'm going to get x cubed minus alpha x squared. So minus alpha x squared minus beta x squared minus gamma x squared. We're going to get plus alpha beta x. So alpha beta x. We're going to get alpha gamma x, so plus um, alpha gamma x. We're going to get plus x beta gamma, so plus x lots of beta gamma. And then finally, we're going to get minus alpha beta gamma here, so minus alpha beta gamma. So I'll just double check that I've not made any mistakes here. Like I said, you should get each of these terms here. You might get them in a slightly different order. Um, that's absolutely fine, but I have put them in this order just for a reason, which you'll see in a moment. So just double checking that everything looks correct here. So we'll see if we made any mistakes in a moment. And what I want to do here is start factorizing, um, for example, this part here. So I've got minus alpha x squared minus beta x squared minus gamma x squared. So what I'm going to do here now is factorize this x squared here. So I can write this as a times x cubed. I'm going to get minus, it's going to be alpha plus beta plus gamma, lots of x squared. And that's why I've grouped them like this, okay? And that's a good kind of um, habit to get into when you're doing questions like this. Obviously, when you do expand this, you're probably not going to get it in this order. What I would do is at the very end, kind of write it in an order like this. We can now do the same here. So what I'm going to do now is pull out the x here. So we're going to get plus. So I'm going to get alpha beta. So alpha beta plus alpha gamma. Alpha gamma. And then we're going to get beta gamma here. Okay. I'm not too sure why I put the x at the front. It doesn't really matter. Obviously, it's multiplication, um, but beta gamma as well. And we can play with the x. And then clearly, we just got this minus alpha beta gamma at the end. Okay. What I'm going to do now is to finish off with here, just multiply through by the a. And once I've done that, then like we did with the quadratics, I can compare the coefficients here to this quadratic, uh, sorry, this cubic that we started with here. To what we get in a moment when we multiply through by a. So let's do that here. So a times x cubed, we get a x cubed. Okay. Times through by the a here, I'm going to get minus a lots of alpha plus beta plus gamma x squared. Do the same here now. So I'm going to get a lots, so plus a lots of alpha beta plus alpha gamma plus beta gamma times x. 
And finally, minus a alpha beta gamma. So minus a alpha beta gamma. Okay. Now, like I said, do take time when you're working through these types of questions. Um, or showing kind of results like this. It is very easy to make a mistake. Um, for example, forgetting to multiply through by the a. Um, something like that. So like I said, just take your time as you work through. So just checking this, everything looks good here. So what I can do now is compare the coefficients of this cubic here that we finished with. So here to the cubic that we started with here. So then A obviously AX cubed is just AX cubed. B here now, so B we can say B is equal to minus A times alpha plus beta plus gamma X squared. Okay, so B is equal to minus A times alpha plus beta plus gamma. So I don't want to say that x squared, we're not obviously bothered about the x squared, we want the coefficient of x squared, which in this case is minus a times alpha plus beta plus gamma. We'll simplify that in a moment, let's just figure out what c would be here. So c will be equal, so that's cx, that's going to be um, alpha, uh, sorry, a times alpha beta plus alpha gamma plus beta gamma, so that's going to be a lots of alpha beta plus alpha gamma plus beta gamma. Okay, and then finally we've got D here, which I'll do over here. So D is going to be equal to, that's the term at the end here, which in this case will be minus A alpha beta gamma. Okay, so what I want to do now is simplify each one of these. Okay, so in that case, alpha plus beta plus gamma, there's some of the roots here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do each one in a different pen color here. So Therefore, alpha plus beta plus gamma, so the sum of the roots here. Well, I can get that by dividing through by this minus a here. So that would be equal to b over a, and then obviously we need the minus in front. So minus b over a there. So that's the sum of the roots. Here now, so for alpha beta plus alpha gamma plus beta gamma, so let's just write that out here. So alpha beta plus alpha gamma plus beta gamma. That's going to be given by C over A. That's C over A. And then finally for D here, um, or the product of the root set alpha beta gamma, and that's going to be minus D over A. So alpha beta gamma, like I said, that'll be minus D over A there. Okay. So there's a lot of work on that screen, but the three results that we're concerned about here, what we've got in red. So we need this result here. That's minus B over A. So that's the some of the roots, then got this one here for alpha beta times alpha gamma plus beta gamma, which is C over A. And then finally the product of the roots here, alpha beta gamma, that's minus D over A. Now what you can see here is, deriving the result for a cubic is a lot more work than it was for a quadratic. So in an exam, you don't really want to be deriving this result. It will take quite a bit of time. Um, so ideally what you want to be able to do is memorize these three results, okay? And like you see, they are pretty similar to what we saw for a quadratic, minus b over a, c over a. So they are pretty close, um, but hopefully that wasn't too tricky to remember. So that's how we derive the roots there um, that we can work with for a cubic. So let's take a look now at one practice question. Taking a look at this question here now, we've got alpha, beta, and gamma, which we're told are the roots of this cubic equation. So without solving, I want to find three things here. So for part a, I want to find the sum of the roots. So for the sum of the roots, Again, you want to be able to memorize this result if you have to derive it in the middle of an exam. Definitely not easy under time and exam pressures. So alpha plus beta plus gamma, that is minus b over a. So for minus b over a, well, let's just denote the coefficients here. So a is the coefficient of x cubed, so that's going to be 2. b is the coefficient of x squared, so that would be minus 1. c is the coefficient of x here, so that would be minus 13. And D is this constant at the end, so that would be minus 6. So for minus B over A, that's going to be minus minus 1 over A, which is 2. So I'd get minus a half there, so I'll times it by minus 1. I'm going to get positive a half there. Okay, so that's the solution to part A for the sum of the roots. For part B, then, we're now looking at the product of the roots here. Again, you want to be able to memorize this result. So for the products of the roots, that's going to be minus d over a. Again, just using our coefficients here, d is equal to minus 6. That's going to be minus minus 6 over a, which is 2. 
we get minus 6 over 2, so that's minus 3, times by minus 1, and I get positive 3 there. Okay, so we get positive 3 there for part B. And then for C, then, what I'm looking at now is the sum of the reciprocal of the roots. So in this case, what we need to use is pretty much anything that we can to get some kind of expression like this. So there's three things I can use here. I've got the sum of the roots, I've got the products of the roots, and I also have alpha beta plus alpha gamma plus beta gamma. Okay. So how can I use these three expressions here to get something like this? Well, if I think about it, if I use this here as my numerator, so I've got alpha beta plus alpha gamma plus beta gamma. And now I divide this by the product of the roots here, so alpha beta gamma. And what I can do is write this as three fractions. So this would be alpha beta over alpha beta gamma. Then it would be alpha gamma over alpha beta gamma. And then finally it would be beta gamma over alpha beta gamma. And in this case, what would happen is, so for example, alpha beta over alpha beta gamma, the alpha beta here will cancel with the alpha beta in the denominator. And what I get left with is 1 over gamma. That's 1 over gamma. Do the same here now. So the alpha and the gamma here cancel there, and I get left with 1 over beta. And then finally, what you can see here is this beta gamma cancels here, and I get left with 1 over alpha. Okay. So obviously, you don't need to show this part, but I want to show why this works and why 1 over alpha plus 1 over beta plus 1 over gamma is just the um, numerator here, alpha beta plus alpha gamma plus beta gamma over the product here, so alpha beta gamma. So in that case, alpha beta plus alpha gamma plus beta gamma, we know that that's going to be C over A. So if we work that out first, so that's going to be C over A. So in this case, that's going to be minus 30 over A, which is 2. So I get minus 13 over 2. So that's going to be minus 13 over 2. And then we divide that by alpha beta gamma, which we know um, from part B is equal to 3. So we divide that by 3. So minus 13 over 2, divide that by 3. That's the same as times it by 1 over 3. So in that case, what I'm going to get here then is minus 13 over 6. Okay, and that's my solution to part C. Okay. And then we have it, so that brings us to the end of this video on roots of a cubic equation. In the next video, we're going to take a look at the roots of a quartic equation.